Good evening to you all and welcome to this um, special lecture series of NPTEL on the topic uh, innovation and frugal, uh, pro, uh, frugal product engineering, a quest signaled by COVID. Um, uh, just a couple of seconds I would like to spare on this by saying that, that COVID will go, but some other thing might come, any other pandemic or any other disaster. But this COVID has signaled us to be ready for the eventualities that might come up sooner or later and therefore, we need to have our preparedness for this. Now, I would uh, uh, basically like to think that most of the audience today are engineering and technology students or graduates and also uh, some of our faculty members who are interested and would be mentoring such students besides the startups. So, I would focus my discussion uh, on first with the idea of giving the students uh, a kind of indication as to what are the things that is going to come up if they pursue a career or study or activity in the area of innovation and entrepreneurship if it matures. So, what are the career options and opportunities? Uh, <clears throat> so, I would like to devote a some time on that, because I would like also to tell you what are the new situation that is evolving, what are the market that is being looked at not only by our local companies, but by the companies worldwide, the global companies they are looking at uh, us, our market for such uh, development. Um, then we will move to uh, in that particular class of innovation, what is the particular class of innovation required for the emerging market, where um, affordability is an issue without of course, compromising quality and therefore, a new concept or paradigm that is emerging very rapidly is frugal innovation, frugal engineering that is being now targeted by both uh, western companies in developed countries as well as some uh, enterprises in our country or in emerging economy. Uh, then on we will move on to discuss what are the therefore, uh, the uh, things that are uh, different definitions of the terminology that we would be using. Then we would uh, talk about certain examples what the uh, companies are doing, particularly the most established and renowned world in this world in the frugal domain and how by doing that they are expanding their market base and how they are catering to the mass market. So, that is a kind of an example as well as inspiration. So, the young uh, students who are planning to take up this innovation or uh, entrepreneurship uh, or are interested so that they can also get uh, serve corporate organizations that I will come very soon on that. Then we will move on to basically the some of the methodologies how that can be accomplished because unless we discuss some of the how part what is fine, but we will have to discuss how, how say for example, design thinking or how say for example, the engineering design process etcetera can uh, support uh, those uh, goals to uh, goals of developing frugal products. And subsequently, then we would talk about 
uh, the you know certain opportunities that is unfolding before us now and uh, worldwide because there is another opportunity that is very um, significantly emerging that is called reverse innovation that is and also the uh, western companies are doing it i will give you examples that if you develop something frugally here because there also is a big market there in the western countries because there is a um, segment in every country which are called bop or base of the pyramid or bottom of the pyramid so uh, at the bottom of the pyramid many people lie and that's a huge number so uh, in those countries uh, whatever has been developed in the lead market that is in, in the emerging market where that product has been developed and tested and established if that can now be moved or exported to uh, developed economy countries then it's called reverse innovation conventionally uh, the innovation uh, was done were done in the western world the developing countries and it trickled down to the emerging economy uh, world that is country like ours but this frugal engineering to reverse innovation will be a trickle up model and that we uh, we will go uh, we will be discussing um, there is just one more thing that i would like to address to encourage you by saying that the <clears throat> there are certain favorable consideration during this challenging moment uh, challenging time that government has come forward and have floated a number of schemes um, for med tech for example for msme for example where the young engineers and graduates can work as an entrepreneur or intrapreneur. Intrapreneur are those who are having entrepreneurial mindset but working in corporate organizations. So, this is a short preamble through which uh, we know what will be our journey uh, over the next few uh, minutes, but I would like to tell you that um, this will be um, a kind of overview. Uh, it may not be possible for within this uh, short time to go into the detail of many, but I have prepared the slides in such a manner that when it will be shared with you, which will be done soon I, I believe, then you can study many of them. What I will do is I will perhaps show some of them and skip. Uh, by uh, indicating only the main points later on for your reference you can look at it and also I would like to tell you if you have questions uh, that you can put it in your google uh, doc which uh, I will answer subsequently. Now, let us proceed with our agenda that we are supposed to accomplish today that to introduce you to this class of innovation and concept. By no means I claim that this would make anybody an expert in all the uh, individual elements and components, but surely one would uh, understand to which expert for what work to go and if he intends to become that expert in that particular field, he has every option to be so. So, <clears throat> if we if we see um, the brief, I have already told you. So, I would just uh, uh, say a few words on this topic. Apparently, the title uh, indicates a direction. If you feel that it is it, it, it has indicated in that manner then you are not actually wrong that is what the intention and purpose of this uh, session is. Uh, well, I have already mentioned that it is indicated for the young students graduates and particularly why I am saying this here I just would like to uh, put a rider on this I have already 
mentioned whatever is in the slide. But I would just like to tell you that it is an opportunity when you are in college in particular or just have passed out young graduates or young startups who are in close connection with your juniors and seniors for product development for multidis which is a multidisciplinary activity and as a co-founder or co-developer you can always seek and get support and that is the a big advantage of being in a technology institute. So, uh, that is another thing that I would just like uh, point out because team, the team is one of the very important components. Three things, team is important, product is important and the market is important. We need to understand where our product will go. If we do not have a market for the product, then it is not a good product and it will fail. So, we will also have to examine product market fit. Either the market is there or you have to create the market either way. So, these three pillars are to be kept in mind team, product and uh, product market fit. Here our focus will be product because without this we will not be able to move to other levels where team is also important unless you alone is the developer and intend to carry out your entrepreneurial activity which is relatively rare. Now, <clears throat> there are 5 million people, 5 billion people living in the emerging economies and out of a 7.8 billion population in the world. So, you can imagine those who are in the low income countries or in the BOP level, what is a huge number it is. In India alone it is 1.4 billion. So, we have a huge market and also with that we have a scope now for reverse innovation that if we create something for our domestic market with frugality that means cheaper but with quality then we can send and sell it to the western countries. This is a model uh, uh, basically it tells you that frugal innovation is uh, um, rooted in two things one is the frugal uh, engineering and the other is need based ideation. Now, it of course, I mean uh, the on the left side you will find macro level drivers, micro level drivers etcetera. That means, the uh, 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 country uh, uh, or economy wise situation in those countries vis a vis the individual uh, situations and positions in both developing and uh, developed worlds. So, frugal innovation sometimes not always gets converted to reverse innovation and if we can do that then that would boost our uh, export that will therefore boost our economy and therefore that will reduce the trade deficit and that is one of our national priority and therefore we would imagine if we do this we are doing a national service. So, that is what the motivation is for and um, well I have already told you but I just would like to tell you that uh, just as the avenues um, the uh, engineering students who are coming out from college, they can start their own business. They can with their capabilities develop during the uh, study and work, they can get uh, absorbed and engaged in startups which would prefer people like them those who have certain hands on experience and uh, some innovation expertise. They can work in uh, big multinational companies who are and have set up their R and R manufacturing centers in India or in emerging countries now, and that is a great opportunity for them. Also, there are Indian companies who are uh, doing this. Say for uh, foreign companies we can name some like uh, General Electric, we can name some like Siemens, we can 
named Panasonic, Hyundai, Philips and India we can talk about say for example, Tata Motors, Bajaj Auto, TVS and several others. So, if you have expertise, you have some knowledge, some, some hands on um, uh, you know experience that you have developed, some ability you have developed that would be valued in those organizations. That is the intention is so, so you can actually work as the entrepreneur there. So, either entrepreneur or entrepreneur both are entrepreneurship. So, that way I would like to address this. Here from this you would see that entrepreneur also is becoming very important in the concepts and eyes of the corporate world and uh, there are institutes called the Global Entrepreneurs Institute and they are publishing magazines regularly called entrepreneur. So, it shows that there is a new impetus. However, in this slide I would like to carefully look into these three bubbles that is one is the entrepreneur another is entrepreneur. What is the common intersection between these two? Although the entrepreneurs um, have more freedom and they take more risks where entrepreneur are uh, will take le uh, less risk, but one thing is common is that the uh, innovation and leadership. So, innovation and leadership that is the central therefore, we will first target to look into and explore into this. If we can do this well the rest either entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship will be much easier. So, let us first focus on this. Well, I mean <coughs> this is also an uh, industry view in support of this innovation in industry because uh, there is a BCG survey there 70 percent of their e e executives replied that it is their top priority and uh, sim similar um, confirmation came from KPMG, IEC, etcetera or conference board um, and also there are reports uh, from say for example, London School of Economics that they feel um, that um, um, that uh, less than 20 percent of the executives were happy um, uh, based on the survey of our clients that innovation is not truly happening. So, uh, firms are accelerating efforts to change their culture, foster innovation and ser serve customers effectively. So, that is this. Okay, there are certain <coughs> reports uh, from um, media as well as uh, consulting houses, they all support this view. In fact, uh, Times of India reported reverse innovation on reverse innovation with a heading called reverse innovation more MNCs take India's frugal engineering global. For example, Samsung who have developed uh, their products here and sending to South Korea. Renault, they are developing their cars uh, using the Indian talent, Indian R and D as a part of frugal engineering strategy and that, that, that effort was championed by uh, Carlos Ghosn, the CEO of Renault Nissan. Um, uh, it uh, may be mentioned here that Carlos Ghosn first coined the term frugal engineering. Uh, inspired with the work for Tata Nano. Uh, that is another story that Tata Nano is not uh, doing as it was expected, but uh, nothing is lost that knowledge is not lost because that idea that concept is moving around and there are many car companies who are now trying to build their cars with frugality for emerging and also to a section in the um, developed market. Similar examples are from LG or Boss and uh, Siemens. Uh, so, this is the TOI report. Um, PWC reports that um, 
that is a they call it a next 4 billion um, of people who are in India, China, Indonesia and part of Africa, South Africa and part of uh, Latin America that with this 4 billion according to them if you add that there in the report only if you find that very next slot the next slot which is another billion. So, in all it becomes again that 5 billion and this market of uh, is of 6 trillion USD 6 trillion where out of which India also has its chunk which is about 1 billion 1 trillion that is worth noting. Um, <clears throat> so, the enterprises are challenged to come up with new value propositions with uh, low cost, but with affordability companies are trying to do um, products which is having those features and facilities and uh, foreign companies also will collaborate with our organizations. So, these are the key pointers already discussed from that we come to two things one is that uh, that it is focused around product and therefore, the takeaways are basically frugal design frugal or design thinking and engineering design and innovation which I had already told you in the beginning. So, this is one that um, feature these are the uh, features of uh, uh, frugal design approach affordable sustainable user centric local manufacturable and uh, functional. Okay. Um, these are the definitions of uh, innovation and frugality frugal innovation who, on which I will not dwell much, but only to uh, uh, just to show you what it is. It is basically to address a challenge at a um, or a solve a problem with a product at a low cost. So, that is what our target is. So, the definition etcetera you study later I have just put it in the slide. So, that it is your uh, ready reference material. Um, I have already talked about frugal engineering meanings and principles frugal engineering first coined by Carlos Ghosn etcetera. Um, well, uh, frugal engineering is a philosophy frugal innovation is a philosophy while frugal engineering refers to the actual product development practices and processes and the result of frugal engineering is the frugal product. It is basically intended for the uh, bottom of the pyramid or the lower category of uh, income group people and middle income group of people. So, that is a large market. Um, so, the uh, R and D etcetera is to be focused towards it. Uh, just, uh, here I would just like to point out that uh, on y axis if you see it is called performance and x axis is cost. So, here you would see that uh, frugal means it, the cost is low, but the performance is not compromised. Like it is it simply cannot call cheap where the performance is uh, low and cost is low where so far the innovation was that for high end production a uh, high end product development which is the standard one we call. So, frugal is there in the with a green cross. These are certain examples you see those examples later I would just tell you because these are the details we need not go into the details now what we need to do is that to just show that in frugal domain what various companies have done say uh, uh, um, uh, general electric uh, uh, has developed that electrocardiogram uh, mac 400 which is frugally engineered and developed and uh, uh, very affordable so affordability engineering was done here you can just cross uh, check that comparison of price everywhere I have not given this comparison, but generally to understand 
uh, uh, how much is the difference. So, on the left side you would find that um, which is the original version and on the right side which is used in our country you would find that the frugal version of the product which is working uh, very effectively. Another example is of uh, this uh, uh, tractor which is a low cost tractor which is called Krishi Shati, uh, Shakti uh, developed by CMRI our own Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute which is a CSIR uh, lab CSIR institute and they have developed a tractor which is a low cost which is for mechanization of farming and transportation and the growth rate uh, is uh, more than 3 percent per year and that is here. Uh, Tata Nano I do not have to go in the detail I am showing you that that is another example of frugal engineered product. Yeah, this is another one this x-ray machine by Siemens, multi, uh, Siemens which is the Multix that is also a frugally uh, engineered product for the emerging market and it is produced at uh, one third of the cost of the original one. Siemens in fact have uh, created a portfolio uh, called smart within which comes another uh, of their innovation uh, is that um, fetal heart monitor which is also designed and developed frugally um, which consumes much less power and all. So, and cost, cost is much less and uh, they have created a thing called smart uh, portfolio which is which means um, uh, simple maintenance friendly affordable reliable and timely to market. So, in that portfolio <coughs> they estimate a business of 200 billion US dollar globally. So, you can understand if you venture into this area what is the scope and opportunity ahead of you. Um, another example is uh, Jaipur leg or Jaipur foot which is a uh, uh, frugal innovation frugal engineered product done by uh, Dr. Shetty and uh, Mr. Ramchandra Sharma, uh, they have created frugal product and uh, how it is helping even professionals, professional dancers are using this. So, uh, so these are certain and, and, and the people can afford otherwise the alternatives are more expensive very expensive even at times it is 10 times than the cost that they are charging. Um, these are examples uh, it, it is uh, infant warmer or incubator designed at Stanford which is also the example of a frugal engineered product. Um, this, these are the examples so that you can gain an, uh, or can get an idea as to what is frugally engineered product. Uh, so, you now can reshape your thinking and imagination uh, to explore in these areas or in similar areas. There are some other examples of um, local examples mostly um, that Choto Cool Fridge by Godrej, uh, Foldscope which is 1 dollar microscope uh, developed at Stanford, uh, Nokia which is which is which has created history that by selling more than 200 billion units sold in uh, 4 years that Nokia 1100 model and Akash tablet um, that was developed here. So, these are some examples which uh, I am sure you know uh, at least ab about Akash tablet and all. So, these are certain examples. Now, to do that what is the value proposition that we said will be required. Again I tell you the texts are there I would um, highlight the main points in unique value proposition means what you are offering to your customer. What is that unique value? What is the value that you are offering? That is the product or service ultimately and in that in that what is expected in a product is that reduced cost of ownership 
That means it is not the price point that you are paying a certain amount to buy it to acquire it, but also uh, subsequently you have to uh, maintain it uh, and uh, also there will be issues like say power consumption, fuel consumption, etcetera for cars say fuel consumption for say uh, fridge or fan it is a power consumption. So, those also add cost to this. So, not only the cost, but life total cost, total ownership cost which is called that repair maintenance consumption and the price that is the uh, ownership cost that is to be reduced. Examples I have already told you which is with the red bullets for automotive and uh, fridge and fan. Um, another is robustness for the emerging countries there are um, situations where there are uncertainties like uh, power supply is not always uh, assured or the quality of power also is not perhaps good there is a power fluctuations voltage fluctuations uh, power cuts dusty environment etcetera. So, it has to be robust also so that in spite and despite of all these the product should be able to work. Um, uh, in uh, emerging world there are many first timers many first time users. So, the perhaps they would not know all the nuances of technologies though therefore, the product has to be user friendly uh, and then only uh, it would uh, get the necessary traction and uh, so it has to be easy to use and fault resistant. Well, um, because uh, the product is to be uh, uh, kept within affordable range uh, with affordability engineering that means, the cost is to be um, kept at a low level. So, as the price um, the profit per unit may be less, but here since the volume is large the number of consumers are uh, much greater there is an opportunity to uh, of economies of scale that you can produce in large quantity and uh, sale that is one important issue that is to be mentioned. Therefore, we need to understand to embody this value proposition that we are saying all these four that we said what is required. The things or the techniques or the how part that is required is frugality and design and design thinking. So, now we are entering into the how part of it and uh, in the frugality and design thinking there are various views, uh, these views are all in favor of the uh, of uh, developing frugal design thinking based uh, products activities uh, like say there, even uh, say there are conferences, there are authors who have published papers, the consultants are reporting uh, World Bank, uh, uh, they, they are uh, reporting that the uh, there are many new jobs in the future that is coming up that requires the skill uh, of um, skill that is a uh, technology know how that problem solving skill critical thinking um, and also say other uh, skills problem solving skills uh, collaboration and empathy and all those things. So, empathy uh, just uh, remember this term I would come back to that once again. Uh, uh, so, all these things are required for uh, the, uh, the young uh, uh, person who is coming out from college. All these things are required for design thinking and the first step in design thinking is called empathize, which actually means understanding the need, the true need, the ex exact need perhaps have not been spelt out very clearly so far, but or it is a pent up need, but there is a need that need is to be identified. Well, uh, uh, before proceeding further I just would like to tell you that um, mm, there are three aspects. One is that that uh, person people should like it need it 
it should be technically feasible and it should be economically viable. So, when these three things intersects, that is the goal for our innovation. So, our product should be able to match all these three aspects. Um, uh, these are the steps in uh, design thinking process empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. All right, I will talk about the empathize and the rest. Basically, these are uh, primarily part of engineering design process. So, I will deal with the engineering design process part. Empathize is to understand the customer or the user. So, and that is that is very much supported by uh, the um, entrepreneurs, startup people. And uh, in fact, um, uh, Paul Graham of Y Combinator, he said that customer discovery begins with empathy. The customer, it is customer discovery, which is actually uh, intended for uh, testing the hypothesis for product market fit, hypothesis on problem, on solution, on price, on uh, to go to market and all these hypotheses regarding a product are to be tested and that begins with empathy. So, uh, this in terms helps uh, product market fit better early on. So, DT to be supported through EDP or engine design process. So, engine design process uh, you will find the definition uh, from Abbott. Abbott is the accreditation board of engineering and technology considered to be a uh, premier body in engineering and technical education. So, and which says that it is to be drawn from all areas of uh, engineering science say for example, physics and mathematics and all sorts of such things and to create the uh, product and design. So, all knowledge is to be uh, derived from all these and it covers end to end starting from the ideation to conceptualization, feasibility assessment, um, establishing design requirement, embodiment of system level design, detail level design, tool design, process planning, manufacturing planning and then um, testing and finally, uh, production ramp up. So, these this is a one model I am presenting, which is uh, NASA's uh, steps for engineering design process. NASA has done it for the students who would like to take up projects. So, uh, uh, the steps are this. Um, see, I will uh, again not go to uh, all these details now, because uh, that will be with you. Only thing I would like to tell you with an example that will be much better a very quick uh, um, example with uh, images. Ask means identify a need, imagine to develop a possible solution, plan to decide uh, best course, uh, similarly create, test, improve. These are the steps, uh, create to develop a prototype, test to evaluate the prototype, improve that if the prototype is not working up to the mark or as targeted then one has to modify and revise and refactor and uh, and retest and create the uh, new version or improved version. Okay. This is just uh, you can uh, look at it later on. These are certain things they ask. The step is identify the need, what is exactly required, what is the need of that patient here or who is who, who is missing limb, uh, the leg uh, as the Joypur leg as I told you. Uh, so, now, so this is, is the example, need is to be first analyzed. Then comes the step to develop possible alternatives through brainstorming, say that is another process. Now, here uh, on the bottom left corner you will find there are two divergent convergent uh, image. One is to understand that when you are doing that the empathy stage, you are trying to create understand. So, it is actually divergent thinking. Then when you are defining 
exactly what is the problem you are converging that means out of so many alternatives you are narrowing it down. So, happens in the solution stage which com uh, comprises of create and deliver. So, create is the ideate when you are ideating you are generating more and more ideas as many ideas as possible some apparently very wild um, and out of the world, but, um, but the, they may actually be useful. So, first is that creation of ideas and then narrowing it down by selecting best from them. Uh, plan and create it is uh, creating the uh, prototype begin to make a prototype then test testing the prototype these are the engine design process steps and finally to improve because if there is any uh, shortcomings or inadequacies um, or not meeting specification etc it is that also here what is done that uh, something uh, which was not intended for um, the uh, original purpose but may be used for something else like say um, CT scanning was to uh, see the uh, body structure but inside the internal body structure but now it is used for um, the modeling uh, to check fit for this prosthetics on the left corner just to um, show the relevance I have uh, put uh, an image of the Jaipur foot all right so from there we we have understood finally you have to build a product because entrepreneurs in their action are needed to build a product Shifting mindset, um, uh, I would like to just read out a quotation of Albert Einstein, one cannot solve a problem with the same mindset that created it in the first place. So, we have to change our mindset, we have to look at from this frugal angle and not only in our country to make it Atmanirbhar Bharat, self-reliant India or through make and made in India, we have to essentially do it and not only us, there are examples already as I told you, uh, Renal Nishan is doing it and they have come up with cars um, at uh, the low end cars, low cost vehicles and electric cars. The low cost cars are sold in the European market at 6000 dollars US dollars examples inspiring examples. Well, this startup paradigm startup and frugal paradigm. So, what is it uh, frugality is not new, but the focus is now more the consumers would be looking for it there are financial issues due to this crisis and otherwise to recessions and so many other things. So, affordability is a question. So, gradually and gradually for the survival of the company, there is a shift happening that people would like to have less features or more essential features that to be included only in their product without the um, additional or super orgatory features or extra features, luxury features, though those are to be avoided and that is a new paradigm. It has to uh, the uh, have the um, uh, the frugal approach and innovating faster, better, cheaper and deliver um, common business goal it would be for both the world players MNCs as well as our local players because the market is the same. So, if it is a frugal design product like GE, Siemens etcetera I already indicated the same thing will be for this for the Indian players and that is a great advantage that that way India actually can uh, look at the for global solutions that frugal products can be uh, uh, considered as reverse innovation. So, these are core, core competencies in India by, for the emerging economies of the developed world I have already addressed that. So, that and with certain examples some of the examples you already know or if you want to see you can always google and find out uh, uh, some of I have already mentioned. Um, 
mm, these are this. Well, uh, there are many examples what has happened due to COVID, what are different things in the people are innovating uh, ventilators, uh, that emergency ventilators, many startups are doing it. Um, even automotive manufacturing companies are also doing it. Uh, 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 some companies are coming out with uh, frugal robots, which are um, inspecting and checking at the entrance of the buildings and offices. Also, uh, there are robots who are catering to the needs of uh, patients in the hospitals and uh, delivering medicine, water and also interacting with uh, doctors plus also sanitizing. IIT Kharagpur also has contributed to that like many other premier institutions and other institutions who are working in the same direction and um, a student has developed um, uh, two robots uh, called uh, Dhanantari and Shavitri which are doing this service in a COVID hospital. There are many examples. Aroga Shetu has been developed. These all have been, uh, all have happened due to COVID. These are nothing but examples. You can look at it um, uh, uh, several other, uh, uh, later. Um, so, um, uh, so, portable ventilators I have already indicated that it is being done by these people. So, these are a certain you know examples what are being done. So, drones are checking uh, the distancing norm being uh, uh, adhered to or not or de deliver medical supplies. Um, Indian army uh, has, uh, has come up with uh, healthcare uh, uh, equipment um, uh, say anti -aer uh, aerosolization boxes and thermal scanners. So, these are certain things happening. Um, these are examples what DRDO is doing uh, the UV uh, ultraviolet device for uh, you know uh, cleaning, sanitizing etcetera. So, these are some examples summarized in one place that the students or young engineers can now do. Uh, with them and using uh, sophisticated technologies like say frugal IOT, these are all becoming very frugal. There are even uh, doctoral thesis published on frugal design and robotic surgery in a world class university. So, that is the title of a thesis imagine. So, what kind of attention it is now getting? Um, all right. So, here uh, it is an example of our uh, um, students project work uh, that is serving the COVID hospital. Um, well, I have already told you that um, this I will uh, uh, leave it at that with the text, but we we'll just mentioned that government um, has planned to come up with uh, four medtech parks where uh, medtech equipment will be uh, produced and uh, catered and that has a market of 70,000 crore which is equivalent to 9 billion USD. Um, by the way, um, uh, India largely is an importer of medical devices um, uh, with a, with domestic uh, industry accounting for about 2 percent of the global industry which is which stands at uh, 250 billion USD. Um, again for MSMEs, uh, government is trying to promote MSMEs with several advantages, incentives so that it can promote innovation, it can promote uh, upgradation, it can do upgradation and become global, it can become the manufacturing India so that India can become the global manufacturing hub that is very important thing. And another thing which will be of interest to know that MSME also in their long term plan is planning to set, set up uh, uh, incubators in academic institutions. MSME is the major contributor of economy and catering to all sectors 
including agriculture, manufacturing and services including the IT and IS. I would conclude my today's discussion with a very inspiring example that is ISRO's frugal mom that is uh, Mars orbiter mission called mom or which is called Mangalayan which is a low cost 80 million USD uh, pro uh, product uh, or system which um, used uh, available technologies and it used a concept called uh, before uh, flying directly to Mars it was made to orbit around the planet earth for about a month uh, before the slingshot to uh, uh, slingshot the gravitational force and uh, go 400 million kilometers to mars it was designed with high quality the proof is that it was intended to work for 6 months started in 2014 and as we speak, it is still orbiting there and as per report, it will continue to do so for some more time. So, there is opportunity and with this, with this hope, I conclude with thanks and if there is a question, I would like to answer later on. Now, there, there are few questions that uh, what would be uh, the uh, strategy of state and central government and citizens in this kind of uh, COVID uh, situation crisis? Yes. Then, <coughs> to that, uh, my response is that already governments have started taking steps and uh, are trying to promote a number of things. Um, that is one. Uh, uh, but the context is that you can only get government help and funding with certain level of preparedness. I mean, if, at what stage your innovation is, uh, or what stage you have um, you know, gone into your pre-startup or startup activity, it will all depend on that. So, um, it is case specific, I would imagine. And, but, but by and large, on this uh, strategy basis, um, I have already mentioned in my discussion that um, uh, the medtech parks, for example, are coming up where um, uh, there will be uh, central facilities where the uh, startups can go and test their uh, uh, devices and models and uh, that is one and uh, and of course yes we have also to think about this collectively as to what can be the roles of various other stakeholders whereas what the for example academic institutions could do Academic institutions are also, as when we are talking about citizens, the citizens are in several different places. So, some may be in corporate organizations, some may be in academic institutions, some may be, some may be in the you know service sectors, and all sorts of such things. So, naturally, uh, everyone can and will contribute uh, in that uh, respect and in that level. Say, academic institutes. Perhaps uh, you would notice that in the MSME long term plan, uh, etc., that has been given a rolled out by uh, the ministry, they, apart from the other incentivization and promotion um, for the um, innovation and um, uh, new product development, they also have you know, plans to set up incubations in academic institutions, which is a very good. Um, point that uh, that would help the students also to get into this more early on 
to innovation mode early on. There has been always an issue, um, disconnect, I would say. Unfortunately, that happened and happens also even now in our country that the industry and the institutes, academic institutions, um, are not very well connected to projects, activities at all, but that will create a great opportunity if the industry comes forward and offers their problems to those uh, institutions, the students, the startup to solve, then it will be a win-win situation for both. Students will learn, get uh, the opportunity to do innovation and entrepreneurship, and the corporate organization will leverage on that. Okay. Uh, the next question is that, oh, they use this, uh, then in that situation, what should the society and industry will do? I mean, I, I, I hope you understand. I you then that if they means the um, companies in the Western countries, when they are coming and trying to exploit our market, so to say, if you intend to uh, interpret it in that way. The answer to this is that, well, um, there are, the, it, it has to be looked in both ways, that uh, uh, partially uh, there is a need of protection, which India is exercising uh, on um, uh, exports selectively. But at the same time, you cannot avert and avoid competition. And uh, there is an adage saying the opportunities are never lost. If you don't take it, somebody else will. So if you don't gear yourself up and prepare for grabbing this opportunity of developing global products with your resources, and India has no dearth of resources that way, because it has the immense uh, renewable capability of intelligence, which can always, the creativity is renewable. So it is never exhausted. So using those, if uh, some such thing can be uh, developed, so then there is nothing to fear much because competition is always there. Let them be the um, uh, players in the field. But oh, at, at the same time, uh, like like in cricket, India learned cricket from others, but we are we Indians are beating them today. So it may be that we are learning from them, we have learned from them, but yes, we will uh, compete and maybe we will do better. Uh, there is nothing to worry about it. Um, all right, then, well, I'm skipping those things like excellent, very informative, etc., etc. I would, to my response, is good luck and thanks. I would quickly, I don't have much time, but then I would still try to address you. Uh, all products should be proven. Well, um, it is it is also to be considered that as we have talked about uh, 5 billion people in a world population of 7.8 billion today, uh, there is still 2.8 billion people who would be able to spend money and therefore uh, I would imagine the livelihood of many can still be um, earned by serving that category. So I would uh, not just say that all products will be frugal but definitely we should take frugal, frugality to our advantage and perhaps I would not hesitate to say that if this helps our country, the emerging economy country, one of our, our is one of them. So if it is helping them, for now our focus should be there because the market is huge. And the capability wise, our infrastructure requirement, etc., for high end products are relatively. Uh, less. So, in fact, if you look at from the uh, strength point, I think this has our core strength. So, in one of the slides, you have seen that core competence of um, the emerging or developing economy. So, that also is really uh, One question 
from a person i'm not naming but i find uh, either he is a doctor i don't know whether he is a physician or doctor in some area uh, obviously i understand he is not in the technical area but uh, he is interested uh, he intends to know that um, that uh, uh, where will he get the money etc and whether government will fund i believe he posted this question earlier and uh, in the meantime i think i have already spoken about msme uh, funding or um, uh, supporting um, so i think it partly answers the question but other part of the question is uh, then i i didn't have the opportunity going to those areas uh, obviously you understand due to paucity of time that uh, there are uh, various modes in um, uh, entrepreneurship one is that you know uh, that um, bootstrapping say for example but not necessarily at every level you would be requiring huge part first you have to they it will pass from the uh, you know developing stage pre uh, startup stage to startup stage and all so in the beginning when you are actually conceptualizing when you are doing the research etc at that point in time not really too much fund is necessary but what is important is that you uh, check what your concept is and maybe with very uh, uh, with least expensive prototype which is called mvp or minimum viable product uh, that i uh, was talking about the customer discovery Uh, and a minimum viable product is often used uh, to test the concept, the hypothesis, etc. That you are offering something which actually is not a product scale thing; it's a proof of concept level thing or a very low fidelity prototype, not a high fidelity one even. But with that, you can always get the feedback and you know in the right track or path. If you can see that your product is going to be right, then I am very sure. that there will be many who would like to fund uh, starting from the angels or vcs venture capitalists and besides there are you know other sources uh, crowd funding and many other things and also people borrow by, uh, from relatives friends etc and pay that pay that back gives equity and there are various different modes but this this was not in the scope so i just am telling you now the money is not the first one first thing but there are others um uh, last question i would like to take because uh, the paucity of time this i will answer offline uh, how can india explore into google innovation and beat china in mass production mass production production yeah so my response to this is india has many advantages great advantages Uh, i don't want to go into the nitty gritty detail of each but generally indian quality on the whole is respected uh, uh, if you if you check your uh, some recent articles etc you will find that in african countries and many other countries indian products are respected their quality is respected etc and uh, i'm sure i mean if india if basically if there is a will that we will have to go and do it and if there is a support from government so all these things if pulled together then i am sure it is possible and then why china perhaps we can really become the uh, world's manufacturing hub well i mean thank you for your attention participation and suggestion and comments thank you so much once again with this i conclude